Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's for no, not forget to, uh, dang, see, so trying to count out a loss from my thought. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. Because this is locked up in Germany. A town behind bars? What they mean by that? A town behind bars. This is by Welt Documentaries. I don't know if they will let me react to this. I need to look up if they got a Creative Commons license. I feel like it used to show that. I don't know. Whatever. But anyways, I'm a subscribe and I'm a like. <laughs> Before I watch. Let's get into this. Prison work is hard and for peanuts. But for many, it's the chance to prepare themselves for a new life on the outside. First, you earn a bit of money to live on and it helps take your mind off things. <laughs> they do a voiceovers. That's a W already. Uh, don't forget we do got the Patreon. Anything that I can't react to on YouTube, I'll put it on here. So maybe this is where that will end up. Maybe, who knows? Um, if you're looking for any of the old content, it is over here on the Lit One, the Facebook page. Just slowly getting re reintegrated back into YouTube. Y'all know what happened. I don't want to explain it no more. Uh, and don't forget to lock in with this Discord. All of this is down in the description. And don't, oh yeah. The Lit One Live, man. If you missed any of the lives, the Lit One Live. That's also down in the description. It'll be, uh, it'll be down there. Let's get into this now. No question. Side. First, you earn a bit of money to live on, and it helps take your mind off things. No question. It definitely gives you something. The balance between education and punishment. Juvenile prisons are often where the future course is set. Is this where criminal careers end or where they really start? That was juvenile, dude. It was a grown man, huh? Of course, the drugs played their part. I was always aggressive. Prison doctors on duty nonstop, open tuberculosis, hepatitis, or high blood pressure. An entire clinic exclusively for prison inmates. They can move around freely here in the corridor and are not seen in public with handcuffs on. This is the Witt Lich Prison Complex. A town behind. Look. Wittlich in Rheinland Pfalz. Every Thursday, this bus arrives at the correctional facility. On board are the inmates from other prisons who have now been transferred here, or prisoners returning from a court appearance. He has at least 15 months imprisonment ahead of him. Ooh. Wittlich Prison is part of a giant complex covering a total area the size of 25 football pitches. Besides the men's jail, there's another penal facility here. When he, penal, when he say football, um, do he mean like American football or do he mean like football, football? He said pitches actually, so it's football, football. The juvenile prison with around 150 male inmates, one of the oldest young offenders institutions in Europe. There's also an entire hospital exclusively for the prisoners numerous working and vocational training facilities, and even a school for prospective prison officers. An isolated world of incarceration. <laughs> ah, I was looking for the words to describe that, but that was perfect, an isolated world of incarceration. Boy, this is like Wakanda, but for prisoners, like, I Morning. It's good. 6 a.m. 
On wing four of the men's prison, the day begins with unlocking what's known here as the living check. A quick look into the detention rooms, as cells are called today, so the officers can make sure the prisoners are safe and well. It does happen, though not very often, that someone commits suicide and you're never prepared for that. Bro knew they was filming today. He came in with a fresh lineup. <laughs> the inmates here are made up of men serving sentences of up to eight years. One Wait a minute. Look at the window. Yo. I feel like this looks like a Florida, a Florida apartment. Tile, barred windows. <laughs> I even, all right. One of the prison veterans here is Shosh. The 58-year-old has spent more than half his life locked up in various jails. So first I'll have a cup of coffee and then I'll watch the news. One of the few comforts of prison life is being allowed to make your own coffee or tea in your detention room. That is, assuming you have some. By pushing a button, the inmates can show that they need hot water. This is always brought around half an hour after wake up by an inmate under the supervision of a prison officer. So by a prison officer. As soon as an officer unlocks the detention room, it's indicated here and in the wing office. So all other officers. This prison is pretty sophisticated. I ain't gonna lie to you. They, this this reminds me of an airplane. They got help buttons and all everything. Know where their colleague currently is. A precautionary measure. See you later, okay. Bye. The size of the detention rooms is just 10 square meters. Not much space for furniture or belongings. Bro, look how big the window is. I'm used to seeing a window slit as big as an iPhone. Like, what is happening right now? Here, you can see, everything's empty. Bro, got damn, he damn near got a balcony. <laughs> then there's the cupboard, where you can keep your personal things. Tobacco, coffee, games, dishes, plates. Personal things, tobacco, coffee, games, dishes, plates. What do you mean by games? What's that, a PlayStation game? Sure. And that's all you've got, isn't it? And here's the toilet. At least. Who's got a whole private bathroom? What? He got a handicap stall in his <laughs> in his uh cell. Okay, a lid is porcelain. It's behind its own door. And here you can do a few exercises. I do my push-ups here like this. Put my hands on the mattress like this, then I go down, sets of 10 or 20, depending on how I feel. Like all other inmates, he simply has to make the most of his situation and come to terms with the cramped conditions. The come to terms with the cramped conditions. I'm not even gonna lie, yo. This is looking very luxurious. This is looking better than a UK prison and an American prison. Off, oh, look at how big. Okay, I don't want to say this, but Germany does prison right. I don't know if that sounds bogus. But prison building is divided up into several wings. Three officers are responsible for each one. A wing consists of three corridors and a total of eighty detention rooms, which are supervised from a central wing office. It's just super clean. The officers take care of lockup and unlocking, checks and lots of other security relevant matters. That includes assembling the prisoners to move them out to their workplaces. Morning. For Matias, it's all three officers handling a wing. So time to go to work. All right, mate. 
Like many of his fellow inmates, it's not his first time in prison. His workplace is in a different building in the prison. I ain't even gonna lie. I thought I, I thought the UK had it sweet. Maybe this is just a newer prison. No, because the Young Offenders Prison is one of the oldest in the country or something they said like that. Bro had a door with a porcelain. His toilet was cleaner than mine. That's... I'm gonna go clean my toilet after this. this complex. He and his 30 colleagues work in the prison laundry. Before each shift, the officers make sure that no inmates have smuggled anything in. Then they all go to get changed. Changed they into do what? All the laundry for all the prisons in Rhineland Pfalz. They got work uniforms? Look how look at the laundry. As well as for hospitals and other external companies and institutions. 20 Ooh, to 30 inmates what? work each shift, watched over by two guards. By working here, the inmates can also earn money and will get around 220 euros at the end of the month. Just sitting in the cell brooding? I did that for a few years and this is definitely better. First of all, you can earn some money and it takes your mind. Bro, this is the same. Y'all ever seen Breaking Bad? <laughs> this is the same laundry mat that was on top of the meth lab like this is crazy yo you do things for me it's really important. probably got a state of art filtration air filtration system it's important that my family doesn't have to send me any money the inmates are only allowed to spend about half of what they earn to buy food or cigarettes the rest goes into an Lock up in Germany it's a an account that's managed by the prison. While serving their term, inmates themselves are only allowed to make withdrawals after an application to do so has been approved. With, what you mean withdrawals? They got it's in a bank account? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, it might be in a commissary account or whatever. Okay. The laundry bosses are members of the prison staff. They have to make sure. See, no, stop. Look how big the laundry room is. Like, yo, I was just kidding when I said top state of the art filtration system. Look at this. It's all brand new. Joe, I worked at the Marriott downtown Chicago in River North. This laundry room got that beat by a mile. <laughs> Where the work is of the right quality and that all security standards are maintained with deliveries coming and going on a daily basis there's also a great temptation to smuggle things in or out inmates could easily try to hide under these mountains of laundry in an attempt to escape there's always that risk but we check every time to make sure they're all still there so basically no laundry goes out until we've made sure that all the inmates are still present I don't believe y'all. All those bringing or collecting laundry are also checked thoroughly. The prison also has its own bakery. Here, the inmates bake the bread for all the detention centers in Rheinland-Pfalz. Those working here are normally beginners who are trained and supervised by two master bakers. Wouldn't be surprised if Gordon Ramsay was over here teaching them. Anyone needing a knife for their work has to sign for it. One needing a knife are trained and supervised by two master bakers. Anyone needing <laughs> did he just walk in here freely, grab a knife, and then just sign? Didn't say nothing, didn't have a knife for their work. Has to sign, didn't have to get escorted, didn't have to get the door unlocked or anything for it. This knife is classified as a dangerous tool here, so he has to sign to confirm he's taken it. We know where the knife is and who's got it, and we countersign when he brings it back at the end of the day. Lots of end of the day. There's normally a time limit where you got to come back, sign it back in, then just re-sign it out. That's tough. Things the inmates use here would make good weapons. The supervisors, however, are always unarmed. That's what the security regulations stipulate. 
That's why in the bakery, only trustworthy inmates are allowed to work with knives. If they need help quickly, the staff use their personal emergency devices, or PED for short. Every officer carries such a device on them at all times. That's the PED, and that's the alarm cord. If it's pulled off, it sets the alarm off. Or up here, the red button, that's a pressure alarm. Then there's the position alarm. If the thing lies on its side for five seconds, it triggers the alarm. You've always got to be in an upright position. If you're lying down somewhere and can't press the button, the alarm goes off automatically. If your business kept on employees through the pandemic, innovation refunds can see if it makes... I ain't gonna lie, this might be one of my longest prison reactions because I am shocked. <laughs> To be allowed to I bet work. you they ain't never ever had to use that. <laughs> in prison, but each prison inmate first has PED. to apply to the prison governor, who will then check the prisoner's file. If the applicant is classified as fit for work, the next step is to check which tasks they could be. So this is a five-star bakery, Michelin, three-star Michelin rated. Like this is one of the clean, clean it. Suited to and where workers are needed. This inmate has been working here for a few months. Like many others, he's happy that this job is preparing him for life outside prison walls. Or the life outside prison walls prepare you for that job, because I see you weighing up nice. You weighing up, eyeballing it. I see you, my boy. Right. <clears throat> There's a normal work structure here, just like there is outside, and it definitely gives you something. Work is not compulsory in the modern prison system. All those who do work do so voluntarily. In the adjacent administration building, the prison management convenes. Every day, they plan all the important tasks and try to find solutions to problems. Today, they're discussing how to accommodate inmates from another... I ain't gonna lie, everybody in this boardroom looks <laughs> very well versed. They look like they take care of business. And maybe that's why this prison is so posh. My days. Rah, not bad. Rah, brother. This is crazy. Their prison on short notice. I don't know if I'm from Chicago to you. There isn't actually any room. It means, of course, that because we're already exceeding capacity by five in our current situation, we'll be over the limit by 50 inmates on the weekend. In such cases, cells have to be shared, which often leads to trouble to keep. He said they're overpopulated by five things under control within the prison walls, the management needs to be very sensitive. We're dealing with people here. I'm disgusted that this is ran so properly. <laughs> oh, man. It's so normalized in my head that prison is just bogus. But they got this one on. Here. This is one what? of the best prisons I've ever seen. Plenty of time to think of ways to take advantage of the system. We bring in a rule and are basically already thinking, how will they try to get around this? And that makes it interesting because every day there's a new challenge and our job is trying to solve small or even large. I don't believe you, sir. Your problems all day long. Back to section four. Shosh doesn't do prison work, but spends the day in his cell. He has a total of 32 doesn't do prison work, but spends the day in his cell. He has a total of 32 years in prison behind him. Burglary, theft, assault, receiving stolen goods, and pimping. Okay, hey, you pimping? Outside, it was always a life in the fast lane. But each time, the journey always ended behind bars. Yes, sometimes in, sometimes out. Two, three years, five years, four years. It all adds up gradually so that you don't really notice the time passing. The last time Shorsh was out, he got married. But then he started drinking heavily and his wife left him. He then committed a robbery and ended up back in prison. I just lost my grip on life. When I was with my wife, I had everything. Then we split up and I drifted back into the old circles with drugs and all the rest of it. And so I have to say that prison has more or less saved my life. This time around. He got a grill? 
prison, he's off the booze and safe from himself. He passes the time reading. Bro, is that a pair of scissors? And more recently, writing too. There are a few impressions I've written down here. Worldly wisdoms, if you like. Acceptance is the key. Accept your life. Accept what you've got and make the best of it. Live so that you're happy. That's all that matters. You've got to keep your mind occupied and be convinced of what you say and do. Need for speed, most wanted. The days in prison are long and lonely. Is this not shocking to anybody else? But at least he's now in contact with his wife again. She comes to visit every six weeks. The complex also includes a juvenile prison with 150 inmates. It dates back to the Kaiser's reign and is one of the oldest juvenile detention centers in Europe. Ooh. Hello, get down. It's unlock time. Yeah, I'm Who's reign? Come in just a minute, miss. The average age of the inmates here is 18. And in contrast to the adult prison, they are accommodated in seven living groups. Each group is looked after by an educator, and very often, they're women. In the afternoon, the inmates in living group one are allowed out of their detention rooms for four hours to spend some free time together in the cell wing. This also includes cooking together. Anyone who needs a knife has to sign for it and return it here later. The inmates are of different nationalities. Many of them have a drug problem and are in the center for drug-related offenses. Mainly assault, drunk and disorderly, drunk driving and drugs offenses. Doing without alcohol and drugs, integrating and engaging with each other is something many inmates first have to learn. I've calmed down a bit. I think before I do something now. It's definitely helped. I'm different than I used to be. Of course, the drugs played their part. I was always aggressive and things like that. Each young offender has an integration plan. It stipulates measures such as social training or anti-violence courses. This is to help the young men adhere to rules and not to re-offend when they are released. Yes, dealing with frustration better. Or if you've had a drug problem, learning about the problems of relapsing. And finding out the reasons why things got so bad. Living together in the group can create problems. When conflicts arise, the mood can change dramatically as old behavioral patterns come forth again. Uh, we don't really talk things through, but rather, in most cases, I, I'm just fully impressed. A prison with a plan that's executing and it's look, looking like this, bro still got his chain on. It ends up in a fight, really. <laughs> I think what happened yesterday might be a good example of this. We could mention that as one such case. Remember? when it all kicked off? <laughs> Even if inmate care is more intensive here than in the adult facility, it's still prison. There's no self-determination for the 150 juvenile inmates when it comes to their daily routine. Honestly, it looked more like a private school. Yard time is limited and always takes place under permanent supervision. This group are newcomers who haven't been in the detention center long they have their own yard times. So they put, give the newcomers separate yard time than the seasoned jailers. Before they are put together with the other inmates, they first come into a reception center where they go through a kind of integration program. These newcomers are accommodated in a separate section of the men's prison building. Here, their instructors will teach them a regular daily routine, something many of them never knew in their old environment.
Die meisten kennen nichts anderes. Most of them have their days structured by their smartphones and TVs only. At unlock time, you can often see that they are only interested in the TV. But we try to counter that as far as we can with group activities and sports and also by having meals together, just to give them some kind of structure. Mobile phones are Honestly, that's what I'm really looking to see. I want to see the meals. And in the entire prison. For many, getting up or eating at regular times and keeping themselves occupied is hard. In the first four weeks, they learn to come to terms with the prison routine. In their own groups, they're protected from the influence of other inmates who often have their very own methods of integrating newcomers. Here they check out exactly where each of them stands. They know what... Preventative maintenance to fight against regular prison things? Oh my God. What you can take away from whom or who can be used for what? Um. The underage inmates easily fall into traps in which they then get stuck. And that's also something we have to try to counteract. Here too. I can't believe this prison is holding themselves accountable. Like what? One of the biggest problems is drugs. Inge Schutz has been in the prison service for 20 years and is one of the most experienced officers. For her, checking every letter to the inmates for drugs or money is simply routine. You've got to look and see what's in there. If it's obviously photographic paper, it's very unlikely that it's been soaked in drugs. Accomplices often try to smuggle synthetic drugs into the prison by soaking them into writing paper. But this letter is clean and can be passed on to the recipient. During the day, lots of cells are empty. This is because the young men go to work in one of the workshops that companies have set up on the prison site. This one is a do-it-yourself store where the young men package screws and hooks, a job which pays the underage inmates 12 euros a day. Those over 18 can earn... 12 euros a day. Bro, this looks like an Amazon package station. This looks like a warehouse job. This is... Oh, man, this is, this is just... It's just really that messed up in America? Like, like, is it really like? Up to 30 euros a day. A day, 12 euros a day. Those over 18 can earn up to 30 euros 30. a day. This paid work is to provide the inmates daily routine with a structure and give them a sense of achievement. 30 euros a day is a lot. But despite all the efforts and activities, the risk of becoming a repeat offender after release is still very high. Yeah, look what they're coming back to. This day, honestly, probably living better in here than out on the free world. Like Very few actually manage to break out of the spiral of crime. But for the governor, they still represent a success. They'd be like, shoot, I'm gonna go to Lischwitz. I'm good. You ain't heard of it? A town behind bar, Lipschwitz? If you have 10 inmates and your work can contribute to three or four of them having a better start when they get out, oh, then we've done a good job. The inmates are only detained here for one and a half, two, or at the most three years. And in that time, we can't compensate for what hasn't been done in all the years before or for what might not go well in the time afterwards. Back to the men's prison. The inmates are also responsible for cooking the midday meal. For kitchen service, they can earn up to 240 euros a month. Hey, this is pretty crazy. You gotta check it out. So I just. Check it out. The food itself, on the other hand, has to cost as little as possible. The budget per inmate is around three euros a day for all meals. Providing a balanced diet on this budget would normally be nearly impossible. The food is first pre-cooked, then portioned, and cooled down again. On these serving trolleys, it's then delivered to the prison three days later where it's warmed up. 
the job of distributing meals is taken on by inmates. This man has been doing the job for three months. And if the other prisoners don't like the food, he's the one who gets to hear the complaints. As much as I know. Why would they not like that food? Y'all didn't get regular pasta. Y'all got the fancy type of pasta. Some say it tastes good. Some say it doesn't. Just depends. Depends on what they get. Lots of them say it's always the same, a bit repetitive, but I always say, hey, we're in prison, not a hotel. <laughs> at least there's some clarification for you, because I can't tell whether you had a at the Marriott or not. Most prisons in Germany don't have a canteen. The inmates have to eat on their own in their detention rooms. It's better. Good food is important for the atmosphere in prison, as inmate Matthias knows from experience. I've been around a few years and have been in a couple of prisons. The food makes a big difference. If the food's no good, special. Bro, it's speckles of parsley. I can see seasonings, pepper right here. It's buttered nicely. Guess what I'm eating for dinner? Water. Actually, when you're working, I've often felt like throwing the stuff out of the door. But compared to other prisons, this place has some of the best food. After lunch, inmate Schorsch has an appointment. The wing supervisor wants to speak to him. Schorsch is one and a half years into a three-year sentence, but it seems his time in prison is about to be extended for a few more years. For what? Hello. Hello. Sir, have a seat. I see that you still have cases pending, including a case of theft. That's not yet final. Okay. His remaining sentence of one and a half years will probably end up being four or five years, depending on the judge's verdict. Shosh has long resigned himself to his... What did he steal? $2.8 million? Like, what, why are he getting four years for theft? His fate, a few months more or less, doesn't matter to him anymore. The most difficult thing in prison is coming to terms with yourself. Just with yourself. The biggest problem is when you can't change old habits and attitudes. The wing supervisor helps inmates like Schorsch with their correspondence to lawyers and the courts. I would imagine like having a lot of female staff diffuses a lot of situations. Oh my God. Hold on, let me try to fix this, man, because this is going to bother me. See if I could be one of the best editors on the platform as usual. And that did nothing. Okay. And takes care that appointments and deadlines are met. But anyone in her wing who doesn't stick to the rules can expect sanctions. Whether it's a physical confrontation or obtaining something by fraud that they're not allowed to do or have, it's up to me to discipline them. The toughest disciplinary measure is solitary confinement. Sure. Okay, let's see the room for solitary confinement. However, hardly causes any trouble in prison. His problems begin once he's outside again. That's where he has difficulty obeying the law. If that's what your childhood taught you, and you had to fight your corner again and again, whatever you want, you've got to take it yourself. You get nothing for free. And so you're in and out all the time. In adult detention, every inmate is entitled to 90 minutes yard time a day. Those who work usually go out in the evenings, the rest go in the morning. Besides the regular yard times, there are also recreation activities, such as ball games or even cycling in a supervised sports hall. When inmates are out in the yard, there are usually two officers on duty. When they're outside, I make sure they don't get into arguments or start fighting or brawling. 
that they don't pick up things that are thrown into the yard by the other inmates in the detention rooms. In prison too, the most popular sport is football. The prison team's training sessions are even broadcast live on TV. Really? Look at that little field. Look at that little football pitch. Okay. But only for the prison officers. The entire site is permanently under observation. At night, infrared cameras also monitor everything that happens in the complex. From time to time, prison officer Andreas Lorik also checks the incoming post. Every letter arriving at the prison has to be checked. The officers are on the lookout for psychoactive substances like LSD or ecstasy. They are dripped on the paper or stamps in liquid form and consumed by the inmates. The fancy letter opener. You hold it up to the light to see if you notice anything. You might see a stain or something, and then we can look at it under the UV light so we can say, okay, there's something there. And then it's checked, and if necessary, we send it into the lab. Security measures also include unannounced spot checks. Excuse me, sir, we have to carry out a room search. Can you come outside? Have you got anything on you? Bro got five different pair of shoes, which means he's got five different occasions to wear each four. He got five different things to do. The inmate has to leave the detention room during the check. Okay, Okay. let's just go into the group room. What are they, brand new too? Inmate Marcus is accommodated in a special drug abstinence section. Because he was convicted of drug possession, he's under special observation. Well, it doesn't feel good, but I'm in prison. It's part and parcel. So I just put up with it. At some point, every inmate has to. Every day on each wing, one detention room or other is taken apart completely. The officers are not just looking for drugs, but anything that's not allowed in the cells. Checking his balcony out. Something could be stuck on top of here and hidden. Medication, drugs, perhaps a knife, piece of metal, anything. Over the course of his career, prison officer Andreas Lorik has gotten to know all the hiding places and knows exactly where to look. Popular hiding places are ballpoint pens, for example. So we check them more carefully and take them apart. We found medications in there that people have actually been collecting, so that's why we have to check these things very thoroughly. The searches take place unannounced. On this wing, there are a lot of inmates with drug problems, which explains why the cells here are checked more often than on other wings. It's quite irregular, you never can tell. Sometimes they come once a week, sometimes twice. When people have something about drugs in their files, they're running a tight ship here, and I can see it's paying off, man. They check a bit more often. They even take urine samples. That happens quite a lot. Drugs or mobile phones can be hidden inside electrical appliances, too. For this reason, the prison management has all devices registered. That's the same monitor that I've got right now. Registered <laughs> and secured. That's why they have these seals here, so that the devices can't be unscrewed. Here, for example, there's a USB connection, but USB devices are not allowed here, so that's why they're sealed and closed. After larger drug finds, police dog units are sometimes... Real silverware? ...brought in to help clean up the prison. Stashes of drugs and medications have been found almost everywhere, even in refrigerator seals or behind ventilator panels. That's why lots of potential hiding places are sealed, even the zippers on bedding and mattresses. Nevertheless, inmates still find ways of smuggling drugs in and hiding them. Some even use the detention room accessories to trade with. That's why all objects are catalogued. They exchange things amongst each other, more or less buy them. 
You've got to take care to record these things. They are all registered with a number you can match them to. After this video is done, I gotta look at the comments. Man. We've got gotta, a computer over. I gotta check these comments over there so we can look up who is actually the owner of what. And it sometimes happens that when they're released, some things go missing. This cell is clean, but despite the intensive searches and controls, a drug free prison remains a utopian idea. In a progressive prison regime, there's simply no way to prevent drugs coming in. The question of how drugs come in is often raised, but the real question is, how can we stop them coming in? And we never will, because there are just too many ways. The history of Bitlich prison goes... Yeah, prisoners literally got all day to outsmart you, huh? It's back to 1902. It was built as a dual institution and consisted of the Royal Prison for Men and the Royal Prison for Women. After the Second World War, convicted Nazi war criminals were held here. Later, it became an ordinary prison for male offenders. Typical for that time, wooden doors. the prison building is designed as a panopticon with all wings. Okay, now this is looking like a regular prison. Okay. Okay, this is looking like Monster Mansion or whatever it is. It's meeting Edison. HMP Trump. point. The old building was only closed down in 2010 and replaced by a new one. Oh. Stefan Christ worked in the old building right to the end. Compared to these cells, the current detention rooms are pure luxury. If the prison was absolutely overcrowded, two inmates had to share one cell. That's got now this looked like a prison. Okay. It always led to problems. The two inmates just got on each other's nerves and we had to take them out again. We tried to find constellations where one was working while the other wasn't, so they wouldn't be spending 24 hours a day in the cell together. What if I told you for just a dollar down, you could take home a camera, computer, iPad? There was no electricity in the cells. Sockets were only installed in 2001. Up to that point, batteries had been used as the inmates' own currency. Real prison type shit. You know what I'm saying? This is looking like a real prison now. Prisoners had to wash in groups in these shower units. There were fixed times, three to five times a week for 10 minutes. In now this is a prison. 1974, RAF terrorist Holger Mainz was held in custody here. Later, he went on a hunger strike for 58 days until he eventually died. This was his cell. It was, of course, very cramped, and the hygienic conditions left a lot to be desired. Meanwhile, most of the fittings and furniture from the old prison have been disposed of. Here you can still see a rail from the bed. They were bolted into place and couldn't be moved around. The old building will be renovated soon and will then be put back into use. The plan is to extend the juvenile prison. Figures that will be renovated and brought into 2023 with, with all new stainless steel amenities. Uh, some of the best tile floor granite countertops, a sky deck, a steam room. In the new prison building, the men are given time. I don't know why I'm hating. I feel like I'm hating right now. Am I hating? Why am I even hating on a prison? Time and opportunity every day for thorough personal hygiene. It ain't even that I'm hating. I'm just coming to a realization that things can be done they're just not choosing to be done in the USA. Overpopulation, bogus conditions. Like, look at, like, no way, bro. We're supposed to be, oh, this is the USA. You know what I'm saying? But this is just, this is one of the most amazing prisons that I've ever seen. Like, I'm looking at the title and I'm looking. Like, ain't no luxury in it. Like, that's not even top three luxury in a world or something. 
Okay, sir, time for a shower. Yeah. Oh, no. Wonderful. He was waiting in his drawers. And it's not... Right, I'm ready. As one of the older inmates, Shosh has the privilege of being able to shower alone. All the others shower in groups. Those who do prison work usually go in the evenings. The rest do so in the mornings. You don't need to stand under it for half an hour when you can have a shower every day. Once in jail, always in jail. There are many inmates like Shosh because outside it's difficult for them to find a job as an ex-convict. So they get drawn back into the criminal scene. Yeah, the falschen Kreise. Yeah, getting in with a bad crowd. It's something you hear again and again. And then it's ah, the law of the streets. Those are the things you hear all the time. Good. All right. You finished? Yeah. Let's go then. Obviously signified by him walking out and walking towards the cell. The correctional complex in Wittlich also has a hospital. The How you say it? Wittlich? Patients are exclusively inmates who come from prisons in Rheinland, Pfalz, okay. and Sala. No, the back. Finished? Yeah. Let's go then. The correctional complex in Wittlich also has a hospital. The patients are exclusively inmates who come from prisons in Rheinland, Pfalz, and Saarland. Both inpatient and outpatient treatment is provided. Doctors can perform all examinations and interventions up to and including operations. Dr. Heuser and his team are doing their rounds. This patient is suffering from high blood pressure. How do you feel? Oh, the usual problem. State of the art hospital. <laughs> With the whole cast of Grey's Anatomy working in here, like this, tough. Problems. The patient is not fit for detention, so he will have to remain in the hospital until his blood pressure has normalized. Though inmates don't have a free choice of doctor, it's much more relaxed for them here than in a normal hospital. They can move around here freely in the corridor. They don't have to be handcuffed in public. They have a bed, they can be treated, examined, and can move around freely. Only when they look out the windows and they see the walls are they reminded that they're in prison. Barely. Another difference is that not only doctors and caretakers are present during treatment. If an inmate suddenly turns violent, everyone's prepared. The training I have undergone puts me in the position to intervene and actively use my self-defense training to protect people. But like karate? The combination of caretakers and security staff is set specifically for each individual prisoner. Whether in a ward or the operating room, doors in a prison hospital can only be opened from the outside. Lots of older inmates are treated here. Many can never return to the prison. The prison hospital is also a hospice for the dying. As the senior prison doctor for internal medicine, Dr. Heuser also treats inmates from Wittlich as outpatients. A third of his patients are addicted to drugs. Among them are also many who have contracted hepatitis C or other infectious diseases, including HIV and cases of tuberculosis. To prevent infections from spreading, addicts are given replacement drugs such as methadone under supervision. Right next door to the prison kitchen. Just the Volzog Right next door to the prison complex, there's a training college for prospective prison officers. Training college for prospective prisoners. Here, the students are trained in how to deal with prisoners. Additionally, they are also trained in psychology. They need to learn how to develop an understanding for the situation and needs of prisoners without getting too close to them. Because... Okay. Uh, I haven't lost my train. Let me go back. There we go. Um, wow. Properly trained officers in all facets 
on, in all facets of the human mind of a prisoner. I'm. This is just so refreshing. <laughs> for the situation and needs of prisoners without getting too close to them. Because the highest priority in prison service is the safety of the officers and of the general public. Are there any women that are below average? God dang. Not easy. We try to teach future officers how to act professionally so that they know they have to provide security, but without forgetting the human element. And that's important, the human element. Realistic scenarios are simulated in role playing. Here, inmates in one of the prison recreation rooms suddenly start smoking. You know that smoking isn't allowed in here. I have to ask you to put your cigarette out. <laughs> Are they supposed to be dressed like prisoners or something? That's funny. Okay, continue the continue the training, please. You know that smoking isn't allowed in here. I have to ask you to put your cigarette out. The rules in the recreation rooms are clear, but the inmates are simply ignoring them and they're in the majority. The officer has to keep a cool head. I'm asking you now for the last time, would you please put your cigarettes out? A critical situation that can easily escalate quickly in reality if the officer doesn't remain calm and collected. I need a backup in the recreation room. In role playing, the student can defuse the situation by remaining calm and calling for backup. The troublemakers are then in the minority and have to leave the recreation room. Afterwards, time for reflection. I feel like I've watched a lot of uh, documentaries on psychiatric wards and everything like that and things of that nature. And this is reminding me more of a psychiatric ward, which are normally more geared towards helping instead of prisoning. You know what I'm saying? You, in, instead of enforcing. So this is... Knocking the inmate's cigarette out. He got to grow some facial hair. Something. Out of his hand or something like that wouldn't have helped at all. His intimidation is not there. That's why they, that's why they didn't knock it out. That, that's why they didn't put the cigarette out. They must have looked up like, man, bro don't even got no facial hair. We ain't, bro, go on. Would have only made the situation worse. <laughs> There's also tactical analysis from experienced prison service professionals. I can only advise Kidding. you to do what Herr Fuchs did and stay calm. Don't let the inmates provoke you and then call for backup in good time. But sometimes the right words and psychological skills are not enough. That's why a two-year self-defense course is also part of their training. Since the officers are not allowed to be armed, they have to keep attackers at bay in other ways. So he's going to give... They teaching karate for real? I, I was just joking. This ain't working. <laughs> this is a hardened criminal who's been out on the streets brawling for his whole life. Two years ain't gonna cut it. Give me a bear hug, and I've got to try and get out of it. It's very important to tense up your body and give a chop. In this case, here in the stomach region. Try to get out of it. Hell no. Nah. If somebody come up to me, I, and me from behind, pause, first of all. I'm going to drop my center of gravity. It's very simple. Drop my center of gravity, because as soon as I do that, as soon as I sink my hips and drop my center of that gravity, pause once again, it's over. You're not going to be able to hold on. Then I'm going to pivot and do all that funny. I ain't going to do this. I'm going to pivot and <sighs> I'm going to try to. <laughs> Get the test person onto the ground and then carry on with your colleague. Stefan Schon teaches martial arts grip techniques from jiu-jitsu. The aim is for the students to recognize a dangerous situation and be prepared for a possible attack. The top priority is self-preservation. 
just like this. Drop my center of gravity. Drop my hips all the way to the floor if need be. Top priority is self-preservation. The best, conflict the best solution to a conflict is to avoid the whole thing, call for backup, and sort things out in a civilized manner. Of course, if I'm a whole thing. Look at this guy in the background. MMA fighter, what you doing back here? What? The best, conflict the best solution to a conflict is to avoid the whole thing, call for backup, and sort things out in a civilized manner. Of course, if I'm attacked, self-defense is required, and I have to react. Then you yeah, of course, you could do that. You have to get your opponent down to the ground, secure them, call for a colleague and assistance, and then you can negotiate. Back in the juvenile prison, during their detention, the young men have the opportunity to gain some vocational qualifications, assuming they're here long enough. Then they can even do an apprenticeship in one of the prison's own workshops. One of the apprentices is Abdul. He comes from Morocco and is training to be a metal technician. I'm learning here. I have to learn every day how to do welding, how to do grinding, polishing, and drilling. There are a lot of things I have to learn. You go learn. here and leave out with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, knowing a craft. You know what I'm saying? He and the other apprentices will later have the opportunity to look for a job in an open prison. The juvenile prison helps, but not many are actually successful. While the young men are working, prison officer Inge Schulz has time for her inspection rounds. Every day she checks every detention room on her wing. She's looking for drug stashes. The prison rules state that all areas must be clearly visible at all times. So here I can see that something doesn't comply with the rules. I'll have to draw the young man's attention to that. Even a piece of cloth is seen as a visibility screen and must be removed. The officer does turn a blind eye to some minor rule breaches. She won't be made a fool of by anyone or anything. Final Cut Pro to the next level. Look like YouTube got some new commercials. I ain't never seen some of these. Unlucky now. The water will start to run. But fortunately, that's never happened to me yet. After 20 years on the job, she's managed to find just about every possible hiding place. You don't necessarily want to mention everything in public, but there have been things underneath the wash basin. But I can see them when I use my mirror, of course. As with the adults, the juveniles' detention rooms can't be kept completely free of drugs. For many, their addiction goes to prison with them. Withdrawal symptoms or depression can result in normal group detention being rendered impossible. Then, the juveniles temporarily have to be put in here, in the so-called observation cell, all the furniture is bolted into place and has no sharp edges. There are no ways to commit suicide here. This hook, for instance, you can't hang yourself on that. In here you get a towel, but we do try our best to prevent people from taking their own lives. Because in most cases it's a reaction to a crisis. And eventually they're grateful that we didn't give them the opportunity to do it. When the room is occupied, it more preventative action, that's W. It's monitored closely. At night, a very dim light is kept on. In extreme cases, it's 24 hour total observation. After work, many of the juveniles have their yard time. The youngest inmate here is just 15 years old, the oldest is 23. Inga Schulz has to count and report all, a grown man in all of her inmates that want to go out. 15, 25 from 15, 41, 9 from house 1. Before Inga Schulz joined the prison service 20 years ago, she worked in a kindergarten. Working with young people is something she enjoys doing, even here in prison. 
There is a certain familiarity, but you have to remain professional. You can't let yourself get too personally involved in their stories, but you need some kind of relationship. Otherwise, you can't educate them. So, to some extent, yes, they are my boys. Her boys' yard time is exactly 60 minutes. Then they go back to their detention rooms. For Abdul, the apprentice metal technician, it's now lockup time. He passes the time revising for his final exam. The 19-year-old is serving a sentence for robbery and physical assault. He's been living in Germany since 2011. Why he got him alone in Germany? Why he got a bunk bed? I thought they didn't have bunk beds. No family, nobody. His defense lawyer is practically his only personal contact. Abdul has a real odyssey behind him. At the age of 10, he ran away from home, hid in a mail van, and took a ferry to Spain. Later, he made it to France where he lived on the streets or in refugee homes, and his money came from petty crimes. In Germany, this is his second time behind bars. But all that is going to change. I've been given a chance here. I have to finish my training so I can start a new life. Well, looks like Abdul is a perfect example of what can happen if prisons are ran correctly. <laughs> When he gets out in a few months, he's determined to make it. Out of the spiral of crime and into a new life. Outside the prison walls. Amazing. Germany, you did it. You did it. You did it. They need, this is the blueprint to it all. This is tough. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.